Hi everyone, I'm Steve here with Brian Sanchez who is at our studio at Fitness for 10 in Carson City. Thanks for being here, Brian. Thanks, Steve. Love joining you. Yeah, we always have fun. All right, That's so we're we going to talk about something that might kind of make each of us kind of angry, <laughs> you know, because we're going to talk about why people don't exercise. And, you know, we talked about this before we turned the video on. There's a lot of reasons, but every one of those reasons is basically a choice that you are choosing because there's always a way to exercise, but let's talk about why people don't exercise. And, and, and you hear, you hear this with your clients and this and that, you know, you're in the business. So what do you hear? So there are lots of reasons why people won't, won't exercise. And, you know, I'll hear that. Well, I, I can't because of my work hours or I'm always tired. I can't, I can never get up early enough in the morning to do because I'm so tired or, or, well, I can't because I have kids. Um, I, I can't because I'm injured. And my, my, my questions always when they bring up the injuries, uh, what are you injured with? Well, it hurts when I do this. Okay. Well, maybe we should strengthen that muscle, but that that's, that's beside the point right now. Um, I'm not motivated. Uh, working out is too hard. Um, I had a bad experience at the gym, so I'll never go back. I guess you showed us. Um, I'm too shy. I don't want people looking at me. I'm scared because when you go in there, all you got is these muscle heads. Um, my ego gets bruised because I'm only lifting three pounds next to the person that's lifting 300 pounds. Uh, the horror stories of the gyms and you're in pain for, for days on end after you do your first workout. Um, I don't have the support from my family to do it. Nobody wants me to because they always need me at home. No, they don't. Um, and, and, and one that I find very interesting that they won't admit, but I will say it's because they quit on themselves. They've just given up. Now, look, there are some very valid reasons why people can't exercise for the moment. If you are truly injured, yeah. If you're giving your body a rest, yeah, I understand that. But little things such as uh, one of my clients uh, um, who... I just adore, um, had to take a break from exercise and she, uh, um, she had injured her back. So it was truly a valid reason why she couldn't be in here. Then she came back after she was cleared and she was sore and she hurt and the muscles were in pain and she fought through it with the understanding that they, they can't fix what what's happened with her because of her age. So she knows her only option is to strengthen the muscle around her. And it hurts every time she comes to exercise. That is a very, very, very motivated and tough person. It's because she wants to live. So, so I think what, when I hear a lot of the reasons why people don't want to come in, I don't devalue that. And I don't think you do, Steve. And I think everybody who's listening to this today has to understand, we completely understand why you don't want to exercise or why you don't want to come to a gym. But I think it's really important for everybody to realize that is 100% your choice. For almost all um reasons why you don't want to come in, I would challenge you for almost all of them that I can find a way to help you exercise in one way, shape, or form. And, and when we look at that, the reason a lot of people are in the shape, the condition that they're in, and I'm not talking about medical things, so those of you who want to shoot comments right away and say, oh, I have this medical thing and you're wrong, but let's exclude the obvious, you don't, you don't, you have some kind of medical condition that's got you bedridden. I get this, but for the most part, most of the population, it's one hundred percent choice. These reasons we don't come into the gym or exercise are barriers that we've created in our mindset 
that we've allowed to let us quit on ourselves. You have to find a reason to fight past that. You have to develop a mindset to get through that. You have to be willing to make those changes. And if you're not, well, then continue to do what you do. Bravo. We're okay with that. But don't complain anymore because your knees hurt. Don't complain anymore because you're overweight and you don't, you don't want to be as heavy as you are. Don't complain because you can't lift the way you want to do. You have to earn that body that is, is physically capable of movement. You have to go get it. If you're not willing to do that, then you're not willing to make a change for yourself that is positive for most people, Steve. Yeah, you have to earn your health. And, you know, I was going through, I'm going, as, we, as you're talking, I'm going, we should play a game. I'll come up with an excuse, and then you annihilate my excuse. Because <laughs> you can I mean, annihilate every excuse, right? And I started yes. thinking, as you're coming up with all these things, um, I don't have time. You know, it's not convenient. Um, it's, I have this, I have that responsibility. It's too expensive. That's a stupid one. Because if someone says it's too expensive, all right, let's see where you're spending your money. Oh, I can't show you that. Wait, you can't find 50 bucks a month or whatever your health club membership is to go exercise? You, you, you Really? And some of our gyms don't even cost that much. You know, and what's, it's funny you say that, Steve, because listen, everybody – if money truly is an issue, Steve and I, when we grew up in, in, the, in the families that we grew up, we didn't grow up rich. We grew up just the opposite, which is poor. So when it comes to money, I get it. You don't need money to exercise. To me, trying to say that finances limit your ability to exercise, they might limit your ability to go to a high-end gym and pay for a high-end membership. You're Absolutely right. But I don't know a trainer in the Fitness for 10 or Parkway Athletic Clubs that wouldn't give you a workout for free that you could do at home. Yeah. And There's you no know excuse. what? You don't even need to go to a gym. You don't need right? a bike. You don't need anything. You don't need any equipment. So I, I started thinking about every excuse that you made and I can circle it all back and it all comes down to one thing. I can attach... Your reason, this may sound bad, but I can attach every one of those excuses that you made to laziness. You're lazy. Could be. If you say, I have to do this, because you could give them a solution to find three hours a week to exercise in your house, in your yard, I know you can do this. That's why I said we should play a game. And you could come up with a reason why my reason's a joke on why I can't exercise. And I keep making excuses. Why? Because I'm lazy. I, I can't think. that. That's the bottom line. Now, there could be some things like I'm injured or I have a disability. It's not possible. But that's rare. You know, and yeah, sometimes you get injured. And sometimes you have to take some time off. But even if you're injured, you want to rehab, uh, rehabilitate your injury. You know, Steve, you're 100% correct. And I'll use my mother-in-law, who I train every week. She's got significant issues medically, and she's an older gal. And she's in pain every single day. And I'm not talking itty-bitty pain. I'm talking rock and roll pain. She knows that she has got to keep moving. So we train and I train her and I put her through routines and she's in pain the whole time because the pain that she has can't be fixed. Just another one of those people. But she knows that if she doesn't work those muscular functions, 
it's going to be way worse for her and she does not want to be bedridden. There's got to be something. And, and I can assure you when you're dealing with professional coaches, we will find a way to motivate you. We will find those options. It's just whether or not you're willing to accept it. And when I see people like my mother-in-law or the other client I'm talking about, these are people who I adore because they're fierce. They have no fear. And these two ladies will go and try to conquer everything they can. And they're always in pain and they're incredible for it. They're beautiful people. They go and they drive, drive, drive. They make the choice to fight through it so that they can live to see a better tomorrow. And I support them doing it. But what we do is we find ways of, of exercising that benefits them, which minimizes how bad it feels. If that makes sense. And I hope that made sense to everybody who's out there. And look, you know, when, when you start commenting, we're not saying that some people don't have conditions. I mean, if I guess if you're uh, bedridden because of some medical condition, yeah, you can't probably get up and exercise. But I can assure you, even people who are in hospitals who are being cared for, there's staff at the hospital that move your legs for you, that create muscular work for you. They put wraps on your legs to, to massage the muscles so certain things don't happen to your body. This stuff is designed, it's like exercising. So even in the worst conditions that we can be in, something's going on with your body so that your body doesn't fail you. Come and join us, everybody. Let's, let's find the reasons why we can work out. Let's look for that one certain focus that is worth every single minute. I hate getting on the ground. I can't stand it. But I get up and down almost every workout. Uh, today in my workouts, I was on the ground, I'm standing, and I'm getting down. Why do I want to do this? Because when my granddaughter's at my house, I want to be able to play with her. And I want to be able to play with my grandson. And I have to be mobile to do that because we throw down and have a blast. Look, find something that motivates you to keep you moving forward. We can all figure it out. I think we could, Steve. Yeah, you know, I, I'm i thinking, uh, see, people like you are always going to find a reason why my reason is irrelevant <laughs> or <right>. invalid. <laughs> so what I'm saying is it doesn't matter you know, you're going to ask me, how come? How come you don't want to exercise? How come you can't? And no matter what reason I give you, 99 out of 100 times, you're going to have a reason, multiple reasons, why my reason is a joke and just my choice. But I think what's important to put in there, Steve, and you can appreciate this, and everybody who's listening to us, we don't devalue why you say you can't. I perfectly understand the reason. We're just going to create a new avenue for you to drive down. It's really that simple. If you're the person that says you can't get up early, then I'm going to find another time. Or I'm going to tell you to go to bed. Quit staying up till 2 o'clock in the morning. Go to bed and get started earlier. If you're somebody that doesn't like to work out in the morning, then we'll put you into the afternoons. If you're somebody that doesn't like to work in the afternoons, we'll get you on your lunch hours. We'll find ways to get two hours out of you a week, if not three. It's not that hard. Something as simple as going out and walking after dinner. My wife likes to walk. I can't stand it when I'm full, but we do it. It's a choice. Yeah, I don't want to. But we do it. And here's Steve. what you're saying. You can find a reason why there's value. Because a lot of people go, I don't want to do that. But so for whatever you're giving up in your schedule or whatever thing you're sacrificing to exercise, the picture has to be painted, which you can do, on why you're going to like giving this up to do this and why there's a value trade there by doing this. It's going to be worth it. Right? Right. I've got another person that I've, I've been working with um, that has lost probably somewhere in the neighborhood of 40 pounds in the last six months. And uh, they, do not like working out. 
So we wrote, the very first workout we wrote was something I had them stay with for several weeks. And it was a, a movement system only. Then they went into resistance type stuff. Now they're in full blown circuits in a matter of six months. They hated it. And now they can't stop. They've seen the changes. I see the changes in their spirit, their mind, their way, their approach. Look, guys, it's called a workout. It's not easy. I get it. But I also want you guys to also realize, too, we can design things for you that aren't painful. Not everybody's out here trying to be a bodybuilder. We just want to be able to get down on the ground, plate the kids, and get up again. You know, if, if you're living by yourself and you're older and you fall and you've done nothing to prepare yourself to get up and you don't know how to grab onto something to pull yourself up because you don't have the physical strength, you know, let us help you. Let's find a way to get your exercise going so that you can at least crawl back into a chair to call for help. Look, that's the real life for some people. They don't have somebody around them. Let's figure out a way to make it better for you because we will find it. Yeah, and you're going to like, you like the results so much that it overcompensates for what you don't like. I like this a lot more than not liking this. And so it's worth it, if that makes sense. I hate working my arms, but I do it. All right, well, we thanks, uh, thank you, Brian, for your input. Um, it's always good, and we will talk to you next time. Everyone, take care. Good to see you all again, Steve. You're the goods. Peace.